in chess, at least I study end games. Yeah, there's not a bingo here. Oh, there is. Oh my goodness. Wow. Coavials. Well, that's spiffy. Now, in this mode, with the suggested play, you can't get the definition. You can only get the definition for words that were actually played. Um, okay, well, that's spectacular, but I picked cave. I'm sorry, let me back up. I mean, bingos are exciting, but um, I don't need to know all these words. It's interesting that... Oh, A.E. Blank is actually a really nice leave. And this does score 20, but the S generally scores 20 on its own. So OVA's also great, um, especially because there's an OVA S suffix, but there's nowhere else. Now, if I'm really good with bingos, I could probably play through the C or the H or the A. I could play through either some column or some row. So like. Yeah, this play by itself makes some sense. Um, this opens more bingo lanes. But I don't think Avos accepts a prefix. And this sets a hard corner that's a bit tricky to... Actually, yeah. Parallel play might be more interesting without just simply Avo. Anyway. Then... <laughs> Spousage? Okay, I saw the word sausage, uh, which is not even here. But spousage is here. Oh, so yeah, when I line them up on the rack this way, hang on. Um, Okay, well, I don't have an E to pronounce, but I try to pronounce all, like, the page, peg, whatever. You played Koei? Uh, nice. That's a really nice word. Alright, so I played a phony. Now we still have spousage, and we still have Gopuras, whatever the hell that is. Garupas, sausage all over the place. Supper, no supper go. Well, that's special. That's yeah. Oh yeah, this is not playable. So I finally like okay. I just want to put down my P and my U, and I did that. And what did I miss now? This is not even like my worst uh, round or my worst game of this match. Okay, that would have been nice to know. I thought it had to have like two E's. Jaeger. J-E-A. G-E-R. Apparently not. But I had the other one there too. So I should have just played that. It occurred to me, and I, this jargon did not occur to me. That's really cool. Jagger. Yeah, this this occurred to me in my mind, and I counted my tiles. I'm like, I don't have enough ease for this play. Man, that was dumb. I was just frustrated by game nine. So. In globe, obligi, in globe, obligi, two words, I played neither, I played glow over here, I was just not happy at all, but I scored some points, and avoided losing on time, the grime, the grimed, or grimes, yeah, this doesn't quite... This is not super easy to find. Beige is what I picked. And 
Oh, well, at least I can feel... Oh, wow. <laughs> That's nice. Quaid. Even Quay over there would have been great. Yeah. Alright, so I played Chi. And then I missed, like, infinite number of bingos. Okay, I can forgive myself for missing that. Zimindary. Alright, what is Zimindary? Ah. Zemendary The jurisdiction of a Zemind Oh Okay. I've heard of that. And uh, Zemindar is a courtroom of some sort. Um No, a type of landowner. Um All right. Well, that's cool. So, yeah. Um, so, I, wait, what are the other things I missed here? Those, I missed Maybird. Wow, I've heard Maybird before. Daymark is new to me. Daymare is new to me. Wait, what? Archazed is new to me. Dayroom is new to me. Dimieri is new to me. Uh, Daymark. Demir, Maybird, Yard Arm? Wow, or arch Archaized. Okay. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Archaized and Yard Arm. Archaized to use an idiom. And Yardar may be either end of the... I'm sorry. Uh, you mentioned the definitions are a distraction. I should not summon them all. My mistake. Because um, I'm just distracting you. Um, that's cool. Mad Fond... Dialyzer. Nice. Bearishly. Beryllias. I know the beryllium. I knew beryllia. Um, yeah, that's cool. Royalist. Royalize. Royalism. Beryllias. Nitrals. Oh, SI. That's nice. Um, dressily, diversely, tri-sale. Wow. Drowsily. I eventually did find drowsily. Uh, day girls. Sordidly. Nice. So I know some of these words. Given, like, an hour instead of, like, this period, I might be able to find more words. Wait, how many times did I phone you before I played Drowsily? Oh, I actually just immediately played it? I was super happy that I played it, in fact, that I'd actually found a bingo. After so many turns in a row of not finding one, I was happy for a moment. Southern Overhunt. I saw the over prefix. Uh, southern is nice. Yeah. Outlier. Oh my god. I missed outlier. That's funny. 
and sad. Overlie. Place all over the place. And yeah, at this point, there's just nothing in terms of bingos. All right, well, that's not so bad. For my level, that's not the worst performance. Um. Yeah, a slower game, I might, with tremendous difficulty, find some more of the 7s and 8s, but my opponent would um, be um, looking and preventing it, so. Also, this is 3-minute blitz, not 20-minute from yesterday. I'm getting everything mixed up. Um, yeah, but... Man, I was so tilted by the end of this. Um, like, yeah, I get that I'm. it's not expected of me to find most things. But when I get one or both blanks and just, like, I know that there are at least three or four bingos. Um, especially if I know that, like, here I've got an over prefix or an ing suffix and like things where all right the iest suffix or ier or things like that like i expect a little bit better but th in three minute blitz everything goes it's just super <laughs> i don't know like i am the only person who will live stream me missing extremely common bingos and that's tremendously humiliating <laughs> uh but yeah i think folks enjoy watching it because they all can relate um there was all a point at which we were beginners but oh my goodness for an audience of like more than 30 people that just, it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That's why there's like an entire separate section just for blank bingos. Because, yeah, in addition to identifying if there's a suffix or a prefix, which there usually is not. Or, I'm sorry, maybe a third of the time there is. But much of the time, the blank is not used in the prefix or the suffix. I should actually get that statistic and figure it out. How many times there's a common prefix or a common suffix and the blank participates in it. That would be a very good thing for me to know. Not that I'm going to find all the blank bingos, but just how hard I should try to find one if I've got a blank. Um... Obviously, I'm still a beginner, but if, like, the answer is that half the time there will be a bingo with a common prefix or common suffix, I might spend a little more time looking for the prefix or suffix. But, yeah, now eventually you want to get to that point with, like, blank bingos. Like, okay, yeah, ten years. Eventually is the word I'm using here. You want to get to that point with blank bingos that I was kind of at with the puzzle racer where you're like oh yeah here it is ding 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 and like um that's super hard um but yeah that's a long-term goal with tremendous discipline and effort yeah Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any practical chess advice I could offer. I mean, the thing I hear said all the time is just, like, drill the tactics. And to me, that just seems so disheartening. Um, I with, with chess, I took a tremendous obsession with endgames when I realized that, like, there's one part of the game I could be good at, and if I'm good at it, I will just win or draw every time. 
Um, and then I just kept building that backward throughout the game. So I'm like, hey, I could exchange into this endgame, which I will win every time. And then I can exchange to threaten to exchange to get into this endgame. And like, so... So it went for my tournament play for so many years. Um, yeah. Ah, yeah, maybe I should demonstrate just like what it, how you play a, a chess game. I know, like, okay, all the folks, uh, they say all the same pithy things every single time, and I'm just going to be repeating some of them, and it doesn't feel right. Yeah. So, uh, let's do 5 3. That way I'll have a little time to. Mm, yeah, that's fine. So, develop all the pieces, connect the rooks, um, make threats around the king. All right. Um. <laughs> Let me play a common opening. This is usually not what I play. Alright, my opponent has immediately decided to spend an extra move pushing a pawn. I'm going to move a piece. Another piece. Move a pawn so I can get my other piece out. Um, going to keep open the possibility of playing either pawn. Um, now note, our opponent has played something I used to play. Um, they've spent two moves pushing pawns. I've spent... Well, I spent... I'm sorry, they've spent three. So they've basically given me a free tempo, so I'm immediately making a threat here. If they take, I get the bishop out with tempo. Otherwise, they've made another pawn move. So... They're threatening both this and that, but the bishop's not happy up here, because eventually um, I will kick it. I don't have to kick it right away. I could kick it this way. I could just completely ignore it here because there's no target. Um, so I'm just going to move this out. Make sure my king is safe. Alright, now they've actually chosen not to bring the bishop out, but it's buried behind these two pawns here. Um, so I'm going to see if they capture this with a pawn. If they do, then their bishop is blocked by their pawn. If they take with the knight, okay, yeah, my bishop is struck for a turn. Uh, usually I'd not exchange here. I do like the bishop pair. Yeah, before I give up my bishop, I'm going to do this. This is their good bishop. This is not such a good bishop. So they've spent one, two, three, four pawn moves. They've weakened their king, cut off a retreat square for their knight. And uh, do I retreat? How much do I like my bishop? I do kind of like it. This knight sucks. Yeah, let's keep the bishop. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um... Connect the Rooks is a really beautiful thing from the uh, 1995 CD-ROM Grandmaster Maurice Ashley Teaches Chess. Absolutely fantastic game. Um, yeah, he emphasizes a lot of these principles. And I apologize if like, some of these are pithy and you've heard them before, but I'm just trying to make sure I got all the bases covered. Um, all right, so here, like, there's this tension. They're threatening to take. I'm sorry. So I have a threat. They might be threatening this. They might be threatening to take the pawn. But right now, this isn't really a threat. I've got that covered. Uh, also, if we count, I've got one, two already defending this, so I don't need to worry about them taking. Uh, I want to connect the rooks. So let's connect the rooks. Where do I want to put the queen? That's actually the hardest question in quite a few games. Because you don't want to spend a lot of tempi moving it. If I move the queen here to pin the knight, they just shuff, uh, move the king over. And it's a wasted move. So I'm going to bring the queen all the way out here. 
where it controls a lot of squares, threatens to exchange bishops, does not get in the way of me moving my other pieces. It doesn't set up any cheapos, but I don't need a cheapo to win this. I can play good moves. Um, all right, so they've continued to bury their bishop. They want to bring their knight out, and I'm just not, I'm not going to give them this square. I control it, you don't get the square. They're trying to take the square, not realizing that if they actually do push this pawn, my bishop comes to life on this diagonal. Um, so because they're planning this, I want to give my knight somewhere to go. I'm going to do something a bit unorthodox here. Give my knight a square to go to. And see if they continue pawn pushing. Like, they pushed a pawn and a pawn and a pawn and a pawn and a pawn. How many pawns do they want to push today? Every time they push a pawn, they're losing a move. Yep, that's another lost move. My knight does extremely well defending my king. This is not threatening in the slightest. Um, so... Um, yeah, I want to undermine or destroy this knight, which is actually becoming threatening. I'm willing to exchange... Oh god, I walked into a fork. It's totally fine, though, because their bishop's hanging. So when they fork my queen and bishop, I'll just go back here and then win this. Um, so we pretend that that was on purpose. All right, our opponents gathered their knights so they run into each other. This makes the knights less effective pieces. My bishop's actually better than their knights at this point. So, but I'm, I have it a space deficit. I have to exchange. I'm running out of space. Well, no, I have one tempo before I exchange because there's still this pin. Um... But no, I'm out of space. I have to exchange here for tactical reasons. Um, because the next thing I'm going to do is defend this center so that I can push f6 or f5. Uh, so I've got this defended twice, so I am entirely safe to do this here. So I'm not hanging this pawn. Their king is still exposed. Their bishop's still trapped. I've not at this point made any attempt to attack, and I'm still better. I'm sorry, I made my queen and bishop attempt to attack, and that attempt failed horribly, but I'm still doing fine. Um, yeah. So, because they threaten pawn takes pawn check, I have to do something about that. Um, but now I'm going to take this square, and their bishop still can't hit it. And this is still, like, not super great here. Alright. Then we kick the knight and take the center by force. Uh, they refuse to be kicked, and so we kick harder. Develop the rooks, take the center file, again by force. The knight over here wouldn't do that much. That's why I brought the rook out instead. I'm um, just doing some tactics here. Like, I didn't see it. Uh, this will induce them, now that I've taken the only open file, um, they will probably want to exchange all the rooks. Uh, I haven't made up my... Oh, okay, they waste another move pushing the bishop. Uh, their bishop here is actually quite good, so uh, it's dangerous. We're in a space deficit. We need to you bring the knights forward, knights before bishops. So if they're careless, my knight lands here with this really nasty fork because they pushed the pawn right next to their king. Uh, I'm attacking this direction. They are attacking every other direction, but not toward my king. And Blitz attacking toward the king is kind of important. Also, I'm threatening this and mate. Uh, so, they dealt with the mate threat. 
Um, I'll just bring out my other knight. Uh, consider moving the rook back to hit the target. Um, choice. Actually, I could fork the queen and the rook, but no, that loses a piece. And we'll go back. We're threatening this. We're threatening. We're not really threatening this because the bishop defends it, but I see some of my threats. Um, attack the other target in the position. And then there's this to hit this target. Oh, goodness, that's the real target here. Just make a lot, like, they're making all these pawn weaknesses by pushing all the pawns. Every pushed pawn is a weakness, so be careful about which pawns you push. Um, so yeah, this is loose, that's loose. Uh, that's a free pawn, but I don't want it. I want their bishop. But no, if I push that, I get mated, so let's take the pawn. Right, they're giving me free Tempe. Now we'll finally attack the bishop. They're going to pretend to have a mate threat, and I'll just push this when I have to. I don't have to just yet. Okay, they've moved their rooks off of this file, so I will take that file instead. I'm threatening this now. Um, I don't control this square. It's unfortunate. Uh, also, when I'm playing with an increment, I am using my time here. I have the time, I might as well use it. Um, I'm going to connect the rooks. See if they can come up with a good move. This is still loose. Alright, we continue harassing this pawn. Oh, that's a good move. Alright, so I've opened the diagonal against my own king, but I win this pawn. Oops, that's pinned. I'm in time pressure. time pressure. We're going to try to fight this out. It's not going well. Oh, the knight's pinned. They played a hasty move. And because they played a hasty move, I had an opportunity. Yeah, I had the time, so I used it. They didn't use the time. That's a fork, so now I pick this pawn up. Their attack is gone. No, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a draw. Or is it? Can I win this? I cannot win this. We're going to exchange. So at the end of all this, they've managed to get a pawn up end game, which is just not winnable.
The king is stuck defending the pawn. The rook's stuck defending the other pawn. My rook is as active as possible. The rook's in front of the pawn. They need it behind the pawn instead or to the side. If the rook moves away, I just take this. I might win this. So I offer a draw. Alright, nicely... Oh! Oh, this opponent outrates me. Wow, so I was offering this entire explanation and outclassed my opponent anyway. That's funny. All right, shall we learn from our mistakes? So uh, players will tend to get hung up on the analysis here of what the numbers are. I do too, but that's because um, I've analyzed all my real-life tournament games with several different engines, and I am intimately familiar with how to interpret numbers due to my background in computer science and statistics and just having lots of experience and having written my own chess engine. But for most players, just click the Learn From Your Mistakes button and um, see if you can identify, like, what could you have done better. So, like, here I pointed out their knight's trapped, so you just kick the knight. And I can't go any of these places. If the knight goes over here, uh, this is a fork. If the knight goes back, then... White is sad. I'm not sure why this is so bad for white. But um, this is an improvement over my move. I'm not sure why this mattered, though. Um, H5. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, just start the attack on their king right away, because like, the king's wide open in both directions. That's pretty awesome. That's advanced stuff right there. Now, if you're pushing the H-pawn aggressively here, this is a really advanced thing. It means you're going to use this rook to attack. You're using the queen to attack. Your king is not going to castle into the middle of this attack. The king's not also going to castle to the left because the rook's going to... It's part of this attack here. So if you're playing something like H5, um, unless the white plays h4. Like, if white does not play h4 and you actually do manage to open the file, your king is just going to sit on f8. But, um, yeah, white's basically forced to play h4 here because this attack idea is so strong. And then, yeah, activate the rook on the open file, connect the rooks, and just win. So I missed that. Um, okay, and then over here... I missed a thing. I played king h8 to give my knight somewhere to go. Is this winning again? Not really. Um, I didn't want to see knight f5. Knight f5 is actually kind of decent against pawn e5. Did I just take this? Why do I take this? Because I was seeing knight takes. Knight takes. Pawn takes. Knight e5. Oh, duh. So this is an isolated pawn that has no friends. So, I've ex yeah, I did not explain 
because I was low on time, but you want to consider forcing moves. I did not consider this forcing sequence deep enough. Like, I saw I could exchange twice, and I saw this position. I didn't see knight e5. Um, but yeah, this pawn blocks the diagonal, and the knight stands in the way, and there's no way to remove the knight, because this pawn's isolated. And I control this square twice. So there's no way that white can easily remove the knight. Like, to do that, they'd have to remove both my bishop and my queen without causing some sort of havoc in their position. And, like, since they keep pushing all these pawns, this has exposed tons of weaknesses and given me free tempi to, like, bring my pieces out. So, yeah, if they try anything too aggressive here, I'll just bring the rooks out and take the second rank and win. Um, so, yeah, white has given up the center, basically. They spent one move on c3, they'd spend another move on c4, and now the knight's not supported. So you just bring the rook out. White brings out a rook. Yeah, like I was saying, protect the knight just so there's no trick here. White gets their king out of danger because they had uh, unwisely, in my opinion, opened the diagonal to their king. Um, Give my king an escape square, fine. Yeah, so this is loose, so, yeah, like, their pieces are all colliding with each other. Uh, the rook on the open file is actually good there, I can't criticize that, but the queen's hitting these two pawns, the bishop's hitting the knight, the bishop's hitting the pawn, this rook, even though it's on an open file, has no target, unless you're considering sacking it, so, anyway, um, yeah, consider forcing moves. I also missed this forcing idea now. Right. Actually, I missed two forcing ideas in a row, so blunders also often come in pairs. Simply taking the knight, taking the pawn, I'm up a pawn. White's in trouble. Um, I missed that. Any more mistakes? So after I had fallen into this, I played rook a to e8, not really seeing any urgency in this position. Um, now I see, like, no, I'm not winning this bishop, never mind. But a5 still comes to mind anyway. Like, I want to bring the knight out. Uh, because on this square, I would be able to hit stuff with the knight. Um, like, even if the bishop doesn't move out, the knight could go there. The knight could go here. That it's like my bishop and my knight work, working in tandem can control these light squares. So this is cooperation between pieces. This knight is just going to play defense for a while. Um, but I can't immediately move the knight because this pawn's in the way. So like this is tempting. Oh, and this is in fact the engine move. And the, this pawn advances so slow because the position's wide open and I have this pin on their king. So as soon as they're threatening to break, then I just try to, like, break with my pawn here or push this and win their knight. So they have to deal with all this pressure. And if they do exchange pawns, like, say they do... <laughs> Bishop a3 is the engine's recommended move. Let's say they do that, and eventually I end up protecting this first, and then breaking the center if they were to exchange. Um, then the knight comes back out with vengeance. So the knight's not as far away as it looks. Knights are tricky pieces. Um, I played rook takes because I was impatient. Probably knight takes is better. Probably knight e4 is even better still. Because like I don't need this pawn. Um, well, I'm sorry, in a blitz game, knight e4 makes all kinds of fun little threats. This discovery idea is kind of fun. I actually disagree with the engine. I think rook takes is just fine. I think the engine's getting, well, engine's getting fancy because the queen wants to move to, like, any of these squares that my knight now blocks. Um, so that's the meaning of this, is that, like, the queen can't advance against the knight. I actually disagree with the engine here. 
And then here, I played knight h5, and I was afraid of playing something like this. No, that's not right. That's defended. Uh, I was afraid of bishop h5 because it doesn't do anything. I'm actually surprised. Oh, wait. No, because then if I play my knight out, they pin my knight. But this is check. Yeah. So this is actually a good move after all. Because it's a fork and I saw the, like this far that like my knight gets pinned. And had completely forgotten this is check. So check matters. Alright, how many times did I miss that? My opponent probably missed it too. Wait, do I have any tricks like rook f2, rook f1? Their king is extremely loose. No, I'm sorry. After they played this knight move, I saw I had this. It just wins the knight. Um, they were trying to beat me on the clock, and we both missed this. Afterward, I saw that. But, like, blunders often come in pairs. If you've made one blunder, be very careful not to immediately follow it with another blunder. And that's just extremely hard to fix, but... Uh, it's human nature to blunder twice in a row. But if you can correct it and just be really caught, well, thoughtful, mindful, I don't know how you do that. But, um, yeah, the way I play comes across as, like, so chaotic because I'm always considering, like, supposing I just made a blunder, how do I get out of it? And that's a really... Not the best way to play, but it works really well in Blitz. Um, so, if I had a move here, what would the move be? I'm surprised there is a move. I mean, trapping all my pieces is not super great. Um, this is still hanging. I could do something about that. That's not right. Yeah, I honestly have... Can't possibly be this, right? Okay, so this is the move. This just defies explanation. Because, uh, like, my rooks are both loose. My bishop's only defended by the rook, and the rook is loose. Um... <laughs> yeah, that's a courageous play. So then they can take this. I take the knight. And I'm surviving this. Uh, that's very courageous. And they take this next to my king. And somehow I actually survived that. Um, yeah, the engine's technically correct. That was a mistake for me to miss all that. But I can't fix that. Um, wait, can I just take the pawn? No, because the knight takes. Knight takes is their only threat here. I did knight takes here to just try to confuse them, but, um, yeah, what do I do about this knight takes g6 threat? How do I meet it? I don't know. Maybe the answer is that I don't worry about it, and I actually sack the bishop, and that doesn't seem right. Yeah, this is probably another one of those computer move-only things. Um, nah, it's not that. It's not this. It's not that. It's... Oh, it is this! Right, because knight takes is the threat. If I can get rid of the only attacker here, I'm fine. That makes sense. That's hard to find under pressure. Now, the thing that's scary about that still is that, like, they are threatening to move the knight forward either this way or that way. But if they move the knight, then the bishop can retreat. And then the pawn is hanging, but that's okay. It's just a pawn. And losing the pawn would let my rooks... Once the bishop's moved, my rooks can become active again. 
I played queen f6 because I was panicking. Uh, is this another one of those g5 sorts of... No, I need to protect this. This can't possibly be... Yeah, I have no idea. This is just a really confusing position. This is just way too confusing. Break the pins, not the answer. Take the pawns, not the answer. Offer a queen exchange, no. Um, defend things one way or another. Like, this is just not... Oh my god. <laughs> okay, computers are great at finding retreating moves. That's funny. Oh, that is so funny. Now, even after this, this is plus 4.4 for white. Like, white is still winning this by a landslide. But they have to find a good move. Um, so, yeah, this queen c7 is finding a desperate play in a lost position. But um, it's better than outright losing. All right, I did queen takes here, which I guess is a mistake for some reason. Um, yeah, I don't know. Am I supposed to do king takes? No, king takes loses my queen. Uh, it's got to be rook takes then. Wait. Oh, that is so funny. Okay, so what the engine's pointing out here is that if you know all of your endgames, you'll know that if they exchange rooks here, and if they follow that rook exchange with a queen exchange, and then we're to take this pawn... Oh, you don't have to know this. This is just a matter of calculating that this cannot defend that in time. Therefore, um, if the rooks get exchanged, white trains into this endgame, but likewise, uh, these pawns cannot defend each other. And if they try to do this endgame here, if you know all of your endgames... Well, okay, yeah, I knew this was lost. Why is the engine recommending this? That's just stupid. What is the engine recommending? Queen g7? King h8? King h8 is the recommended move. Yeah, you can't exchange into that endgame. You can't trade queens there. But with the pawns disconnected, like... Oh, I'm sorry, what I was trying to point out is that if all the pieces get exchanged, white cannot win that. Um, so that means that this rook exchange... Like, this rook can't go anywhere. You could attack the queen, but then there's a perpetual back here. Yeah. All right, take care. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I'm still amazed that I missed so many things and yet still saved the game because my opponent could not use their time correctly. You don't see that every day. Well, it was 5-3. Nobody understands how to play 5-3. That's pretty funny. So, as much as people say drill tactics, there's another side to things. Just lots of ideas.